those IP addresses. So what does everyone think characterizes a mal uh, malicious IP address? Yes, Michael? Some horrible <laughs> bot looking to do damage. <laughs> That's a good definition, yes, Benji? Uh, the source of a DDoS attack. I, did I see someone? Yes. So I think reputation may be known good behavior for that IP. Can, can you repeat the answers for the reporting? Uh, a bot <laughs> that is basically trying to destroy your content. Um, the source of a DDoS attack. Uh, and no reputation. No reputation. No reputation. Okay. IP address or internet protocol address is like a return address for all of our online requests. It is typically a bot trying to make requests to a website, trying to find its vulnerabilities. It poses a security threat and leaves us and our users open for exploitation. Remember this. Gone are the days of internet ad spamming, and this has been replaced by spam comments. So apart from the direct damage caused to end users and organizations affected by spam campaigns, bots can also choke server bandwidth and increase costs for ISPs, internet service providers. Uh, before I proceed further, please know that IP address detection and classification alone is not a foolproof way to prevent bad actors from accessing your website. An entire organization could share an IP address. If one person is a bad actor, but the rest of the people in that organization have been making valuable contribution or engagement with your website, it would be unfair to categorize the entire organization through the means of its IP address as a bad entity. Our classification idea is not a unique model, and there are services provided online, granted at a premium fee, to help you solve this problem right now, Perimeter X is one such company, which I think the Drupal Association uses. What's the name of the company? Perimeter X. According to the website, Perimeter X provides services that utilize behavioral fingerprints, predictive analytics, and advanced machine learning models to differentiate real users from automated attacks and accurately identify and block sophisticated threats. But one disadvantage to using commercially available protection packages is that they may not 100% fit with your use case. You may have good bots, web devs, who frequent your website, or you may be making API calls, which may be blocked by the standard protocol that these services use. Thus, we wanted to write a custom module to overcome this issue. As previously discussed, any machine learning model needs a data set. So the data set that we are working with contains web server logs from a few large websites. Please note that all of the websites that we are using are Drupal based. The data contains the HTTP status code, the path that was pulled, the full user agent string. We have, however, removed any identifying information since that is PIA, or personally, personally identifiable information, and we did not want to attack people or <laughs> misidentify someone as a malicious actor and have them be penalized for the same. Going back to the slide that Danny had presented earlier, any machine learning classification generally follows this pipeline. For us to successfully code a supervised machine learning model for IP address classification, we need a large label data set to, turn, to train our model on. We have a large data set, but it does not have any labels. This would be part of the pre-processing stage. You can help. I do need a label. Uh, we do need to label the traffic so that the machine can learn. This is normally the worst part of a machine learning, and it is also where human biases can be accommodated. There are online services that would label your data for you, such as Mechanical Turk by AWS. But that is a whole can of worms on its own due to a lot of ethical concerns for using cheap, unskilled labor. You can read more on it on Google, which is not good. Um, so before I talk more about how we are going to go about this, let's do a practice run of what, uh, of what human labeling would look like. I just want to show off hands for answers. Do you think this is a good or a bad data point? Yeah. Why? Because WP login shouldn't be beneath press. A WordPress login shouldn't be there for a Drupal website. 
What about this one? Good? Good. Yeah. Bad? Unsure? <laughs> yes, it's a, it's a good uh, data point and a real human being is trying to access Michael's profile. What about this one? Again, on a Drupal website. WordPress login. Anything else? Anyone notices here? The user, uh, it is a Java client making a request to another human being. What about this one? Search engine, so it's probably good. Without <laughs> 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 I cannot. That's a good one. Uh, you wouldn't want to mistakenly block a search engine bot because then it would make your website disappear from search engine results. This one? Similar. This looks legitimate. But again, it's WordPress. This one again is a Google bot. It's a good one. Mm -hmm. Lastly? Do not block that. <laughs> <laughs> So now that we've seen a few examples of what a labeling task would look like, we have created a labeling interface. You will view the data being labeled, select an option from the three tags, good, bad, unsure, and submit. If you would like to help with this ongoing project and help me curate a large label data set so that I could train my machine learning model on, Kindly send me an email on ip-data-tagging at umish.edu. And once we have a sufficient number of label data points, we can start training our model on it. The whole idea behind us putting in all of this effort is so that it can be implemented in your systems. Our module would essentially assign a risk score to IP addresses, and it will leave the choice to the website admins to set a threshold to classify the IP addresses as malicious or non-malicious, and whether or not to block them. This is the unique feature of what we are trying to write as compared to the services that are provided online at the moment. In the future, I hope to take the label data set, train my model, write a module to help implement the machine learning model. I would also like to expand it to identify behavioral patterns, like we discussed about shared IP addresses. I do not want us to classify an IP address as bad based on an isolated incident, but look at the behavioral history in the web server logs and then try to make that determination. Thank you. Any questions? You see there's also a recognition API Drupal module that's that yes, point. so I saw that one. Um, I think if, question is recording? Yes, there was, is. Uh, so the question is that there is also a recognition API module on Drupal at the moment. So I looked at that one when I was initially uploading. Um, it seemed to be just created during a sprint, um, I think back in 2014, and it assigned taxonomies to specific images. So it's similar, but I think our module is a little bit different in that it automatically populates the alt text. Is your code available for me to use? The question is if the module is available mm -hmm. for use. Yes. Yes, we have uploaded it to. Where can I find it? Are you paying attention? You can find it on the project <laughs> in Drupal underscore There was a slide about this. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes. Uh, do you think the future of uh, machine learning is that we'll all be using uh, Google and AWS and IBM and Microsoft? Or do you think people will, will have their own, be running their own models? So the question is whether we'd be reliant on Google, IBM, and other big service providers for machine learning models that we'll be writing our own. So I think that largely depends on the type of data you're looking at and the complexity of what you're trying to do. So, for example, I could run, if I have, you know, just a couple million lines in a CSV. I can run that locally and I can build a model and get maybe 89% accuracy, which is pretty good for a model. Um, if I'm running a lot of images or I'm trying to do very deep neural networks, it can still be done locally, but at, at a very time costly sort of manner. 
Um, it's easier just to use the services that Google, AWS, Microsoft, and IBM offer. So I don't think we'll become reliant on it, but it's very much depending on what you're going to be doing machine learning for. On the other hand, my personal opinion is, as humans, we are a very suspicious bunch. And we are still self-reliant in a lot of ways. Machine learning can now accurately diagnose and identify diseases, but we still trust and rely on a human opinion for the same. We go to a doctor, we don't just turn up to a machine learning model and be like, what is wrong with me? I think at the end of the day, it just it's a very subjective <coughs> point, but we would still be self-reliant to an extent. Any other last questions? All right. Thank you, everyone, for being such a great audience.